So the purpose of this video is to talk about nucleotide structure and ultimately discuss how nucleotide structure plays into the overall structure of DNA. But if we take a second to look at this generic nucleotide molecule on the screen, it has three major parts that we need to talk about. The first part is the phosphate, and the phosphate is represented on here as our orange circle. And if you notice, the phosphate is connected to the next part, the deoxyribose sugar, with this bar. Uh, the bars represent covalent bonds. And what we're seeing here is that all three parts of the nucleotide are all covalently bonded together. So there are bonds that are shared between the phosphate and the deoxyribose sugar. And there's also bonds that are shared between the deoxyribose sugar and the base. Now, the sugar in the middle has this pentagram style shape to it. And the idea with that one is each of the points on this deoxyribose sugar represent a carbon. So we talked about sugars earlier in the year when we were discussing different macromolecule groups. And if you remember, sugars are carbohydrates. So this one is one that has five different carbons in it because each one of those points represents a carbon molecule. So like that's the reason for part of the shape here. And the final thing to talk about is the base. Now, the base is interchangeable. So in uh, some instances, it could be adenine, thymine, cytosine, or guanine. Uh, it could even be uracil if we were talking about a different type of nucleotide. Uh, there are nucleotides that make up RNA that are a little bit different than the ones that make up DNA. They do not have deoxyribose sugar. Right? They just have uh, what is called ribose. So it's, it's a slightly different uh, sugar molecule. But they're still nucleotides. They're just a, a different type of nucleotide that we're seeing in the RNA molecules as opposed to in uh, the DNA molecules. So to talk about the effect that this has in the overall structure of DNA, we'll first get this one out of our way and then uh, take a moment to discuss how the nucleotide structure sort of affects the larger picture of a DNA molecule. So if we take a minute to look at this image, what we're seeing is, is the same thing ultimately that we had in the first one. So the phosphate that was shown in the first one is still represented here. The sugar is still represented in the middle. You notice it still has that five-pointed shape to it. And then the bases are on here, but now the bases are labeled. So instead of just being a generic base, we make this a little bit bigger so you can see it, right? So instead of just being a generic base, now they're labeled with those letters that represent the, the different uh, nitrogenous bases. So we have C for cytosine, G for guanine, we've got A for adenine, and then T for thymine. Uh, so if we're looking at this one, I like this image a lot because it labels the sugar phosphate backbone. Uh, one of the things that separates DNA from RNA is that DNA has this sugar phosphate backbone on both sides. This allows the molecule to be very stable and DNA can be um, in the cell for a very, very long time and it won't break down or degrade at all because that sugar phosphate backbone protects it on both sides. Uh, another thing that I really like about this image is that it does a good job showing the hydrogen bonds between some of the different base pairs. So we see that G and C make three hydrogen bonds, which is why they're connected together with three bars. And then adenine and thymine make two hydrogen bonds, which is why they're simply connected together with, uh, with two bars. So if we want to think about how this plays a role in the overall structure of DNA, there's one final image for us to look at that uh, shows that fairly well. What this one does is it integrates in what we were discussing in uh, that overall diagram. And I think this allows you to connect the like molecular structure of nucleotides with the stereotypical image that we normally think of with DNA. So if you look at this one, again, the same layout, phosphate and sugar make up the backbone, which if you follow that up, it becomes part of the coiled part of the structure of DNA. And then in the center, you have adenine and thymine bonding together. And then the same thing with, with cytosine and guanine. Again, those hydrogen bonds are represented. So you can see that the different nitrogenous bases are the things that make up like the rungs of the ladder of DNA, if you will. So we continue up, you're seeing that structure in the middle, whereas the sugar and phosphate are integrated into that backbone. You can see as it weaves around in the double helix structure of our DNA molecule. So I, I really like this picture in that it takes the molecular structure and then shows you as it comes up like how that plays into the more stereotypical double helix model of the DNA molecule. So we'll summarize a few of these things at the end, but ultimately, if you understand those three parts, that there's a phosphate, the deoxyribose sugar, and then the nitrogenous base that make up the nucleotide structure, that's the main thing that I would like you to take away from this one. So 
just to uh, summarize this, we've got the, the three parts, so you have them written down, phosphate, the deoxyribose sugar, and the base. Keep in mind with this one, with uracil, uh, that is definitely a nitrogenous base. The thing is, the structure of the nucleotides are a little bit different in RNA. So you would only see uracil in an example where you would have ribose sugar and then not the deoxyribose sugar. So that's maybe one to, uh, to add in there that that would be the only instance in which you would see uracil is the, the structure for an RNA molecule, whereas the examples that were all given in this video are all nucleotide examples from a DNA molecule. So I hope this was helpful in uh, going through and helping you understand the parts and structures of a nucleotide and how they tie into the overall structure of DNA.